Hello everyone and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Sophia leaves the bistro for work at night, Tate waits for her on the square. His hope was that they could go on another date. They sit at a table and eat the French food she was going to bring home because her younger brothers won't like it. Holly discovers Eric in the pub after returning from Paris. She tells him about Holly forgiving her mother and about Kat when they are seated at a table. She now understands why some people lie after seeing the entire false Abigail incident. She understands that Nicole and Eric were only watching out for her. You're a really great person, and I forgive you too, Eric, she also recognized. He smiles. At the Horton house, Julie greets a solemn Chad. Not only did Abigail lose her memories in Paris, but she also discovers that she wasn't Abigail at all. He informs her that Clyde desired for Abigail to wed him and embezzle his money. Assuming that Chad would wed someone he hardly knew, Julie rolls her eyes at Clyde. Chad acknowledges he did just that as he hangs his head. Julie opens her mouth. In the Horton House living room passed through, Chad ponders. Mark is taken to the cell across from Kat, who is pacing her detention cell. He says he doesn't know if their mother is still alive because he couldn't reach Clyde. Though she finds it hard to imagine they squandered everything away for nothing, Kat says they can't give up hope. At least he didn't murder Chad in cold blood, which gives Mark comfort. When Steve visits Marlena at the townhouse, he tells her about Mark and Kat. The bright side, according to Steve, is that John spared Katharina, Kat's mother, who might still be living today. Tate chokes on escargot in the square while trying to remain calm. When Sophia took her grandmother's sea snail salad to school as a child, she remembers the students making gagging noises, except for Holly, who punched one of them. Sophia is shocked that a boy caused them to lose their friendship. However, Sophia asks Tate whether he has changed his mind about moving on from Holly after he asked her out twice in a row, motivated by Holly pursuing her goals. In order to avoid destroying their bond the way Sophia and Holly did, he affirms that he made amends with Aaron before pursuing her. Sophia is not very grateful that Aaron relinquished his claim on her in order to give Tate the opportunity to pursue it. Additionally, she is unsure if Tate is prepared to move on. She is not a stand-in. I'm worthy of better. Holly claims in the pub that she is aware that Eric's murder of her father was a horrible accident. In addition, she gave Tate potentially fatal medications the night she owed. Therefore, she has no right to pass judgment. They are fortunate to have Eric in their lives, he has been an excellent father. Before departing for Paris, Eric is delighted that they had this chat. Holly is shocked to hear that Brady has been cleared and that he is departing so quickly. Holly acknowledges that she projected her grief over her father's passing on to Brady. She believes that Tate would never forgive her for spying on him in order to gather information against his father. He is currently seeing Sophia. Before it's too late, Holly needs to speak with him. Mark is thankful he didn't kill Chad while he is in prison since it would have been a horrible tragedy, but also because he stops and gives his sister a serious look. Because you knew I wasn't just pretending to be in love with Chad, Kat concludes. She breaks down in tears as she praises Chad's devotion to Abigail and his qualities as a husband and father. He will never be able to forgive her now that the truth is out. They are concerned that Aaron and Felicity, their siblings, may learn of the news. Mark tells Kat that they will always love her. They'll work together to find a solution. In the Horton living room, Chad and Julie stand facing each other gravely. Julie holds back her outrage when pointing out that the marriage is illegal at the Horton house, but Chad thinks he has disrespected Abigail's memory. Julie retorts that the only thing that is dishonorable about the situation is that woman. Chad reveals that by threatening to harm her mother, Clyde coerced Kat into lying to him. Julie won't allow him to feel sorry for a phony. Julie, who has supported him through everything, is referred to by Chad as his rock. Julie breaks down in tears. Having him and the children there with her and Doug has been amazing. He needs to do something, but she offers to make him a pot of tea. Steve reveals that in order to stop Clyde from calling anyone outside to issue the kill order, he had Shane phoned the Supermax warden at the townhouse. 
Without knowing where Katerina is, Marlena questions how they manage to keep her secure. They can't help but remind her of the bright side, Steve explains. When Marlena considers telling John that he didn't murder her, her countenance brightens. She grabs her cell phone, even if a character or performer has been in a soap opera for decades, we are aware that they come and leave. However, we'll admit to being taken aback when we found out that Theo Pangliss, the longest-serving Demera on Days of Our Lives, was leaving the program and probably wouldn't bring Tony back. Although Tony and Andre, who look like him, have come and gone throughout the years, it was nearly impossible to imagine never seeing Pangliss in Salem again, but at the time, he had hinted that he would return later if there were any modifications made to the script. So, we had hoped he would come back, but we didn't think it would happen so soon. Because we learned that Days of Our Lives was hiring a new writing staff, led by Paula Quickly and Jean Marie Ford, only in July. Only a few months later, in early October, we found out that Tony and Anna will return the following year. We are enthusiastic about what is ahead because it sounds like Pangliss is already quite pleased with how things are going in Salem. The actor posted a behind-the-scenes photo of himself and his on-screen younger brother, Billy Flynn, Chad, on Instagram, and their smiles alone told us much. It feels great to be working with one of my favorite people again at Days, Pangliss remarked. Working with Billy is so unique. I appreciate the warm embrace you gave me, friend. The new authors are changing everything. Demera is back even though it's great to see reunions and know that the people on Days of Our Lives genuinely care about one another, we think the final two lines will really delight fans. Since the actor's satisfaction with a writing team is known. Regarding the Demeros return, we'll be interested to watch how everything unfolds on TV. Will the family arguments that seem to go on forever come to an end? Instead of being a trinket that the siblings trade, will the business grow into a significant power in the community? Will Stefano make a comeback from the dead? Perhaps not that one. Without his renowned late portrayer, Joseph Muscalo, he could not be revived by chips, essences, or any other means. Let's just return to the fundamentals of Demera now that Tony is back in town. According to Days of Our Lives spoilers for the week of October 21st to 25th, Nancy Wesley and Joy Wesley are returning to Salem, and Chloe Lane's mother and sister are visiting the area. Given her experience with Johnny DeMera, it appears like Joy will get off to a quick start. It appears that Joy and Johnny will be collaborating closely, since additional teasers suggest that she may be interested in trying out for body and soul. Since Johnny and his wife, Chanel DeMera, have had some issues in paradise, may Joy's coming to Salem be the final nail in the coffin for the Janelle romance? Days of our spoilers, Joy Wesley and Johnny DeMera go to sleep Days of our spoilers suggest that Joy and Johnny will go to bed sometime between October 21st and 25th. Naturally, Johnny is trying to stick it to Chanel because he thinks she cheated on him with Alex Kiriakis. Assuming the body and soul star was with his wife, Johnny unintentionally entered a room where he witnessed Alex performing the act with Stephanie Johnson, Abigail Klein. Johnny is completely misguided, and if he gives in to temptation, he could destroy his marriage. According to DOL spoilers for A Baby Makes Three Days, there is a slim possibility that Chanel will overlook Johnny's treachery and Janelle will make amends. All bets would be off, though, if Joy were pregnant particularly considering Chanel recently lost her pregnancy. Given that physicians had determined that the baby might have different talents when born, Chanel was ecstatic to have Johnny's kid and prepared to tackle any hurdles with their little one. Should Joy become pregnant following this one-night encounter, it would further exacerbate Chanel's grief and Johnny's betrayal, as Chanel's pregnancy loss was traumatic. Would Joy become pregnant if she and Johnny had sex? Post your opinions in the space provided for comments. Visit our website every day for the most recent news, spoilers, and updates on Days of Our Lives, and tune in frequently to Days on Peacock to watch all the drama.